back to John Madden Sales. Today we're going to talk about stall cleaning. So every morning our spreader is loaded with the hay and straw we're going to need for the day. This comes from a barn in a separate location. A couple of reasons why we don't have our hay and our straw in this barn is one, our barn wasn't designed to have a hay loft. Uh, we prefer from a fire safety standpoint and also for air quality to have a separate barn of hay and straw. Our barn is also insulated, so we don't need the hay and straw above us to insulate us. Um, and because we do clean our stalls directly into the spreader, we have the ability to just bring down what we need every day in this spreader. And then once it's empty, we can start cleaning. Just a little bit of info about the stall design here at John Madden Sales. The stall size is 12 by 14, so 12 deep and 14 wide. Uh, as you can see, looking around the stall, we have a lot of ventilation. Very tall ceiling, uh, very open. We have the opportunity in this particular stall to open that window on the side as well. The back door, and, and this goes for every stall that we have here, is actually kind of an emergency exit as well. We can take the horse out of that door or open the top and they can hang their heads out um, into the courtyard. So that also provides for more ventilation, also a way for the horse to kind of be outside while being in the stall, which is nice. Um, the floors are designed with a concrete apron around the whole outside. And I will show you that a little bit better once we're cleaning it. You can see here, solid concrete here and then uh, stone dust compacted in the middle, which is good for drainage and also gives them a little bit of traction. And every stall that we have, we try to offer free choice mineral salt. We use good old fashioned water buckets here, not automatic waters. I know that there are automatic waters on the market now that do monitor how much your horse is drinking, but we prefer the good old fashioned two water buckets per horse and they get filled as much as the horses need them uh, throughout the day or at night check. The back of the stall has our feed tub. We like to walk in the stall to feed the horse because it gives you another opportunity to kind of inspect and make sure that the horse has uh, dropped manure during the day. Um, it gives you a chance to look at the horse again and see if maybe their legs are okay or that they're acting okay. So I know that it is popular for barns to have the feed tub in the front and maybe a hole in the grate in the front where you can just dump the grain through, but we prefer to be able to walk in the stall. It's just another time to see the horse, another time to, um, to just observe everything a little bit more detailed. And then you're kind of forced to look in the bucket as well, make sure that they've eaten um, and that there's no problems. Here in our feed room is where we keep all the tools for stall cleaning. We have straw forks, we have brakes, and we have shaving forks. Um, uh, also, on the other side, brooms and shovels. So everything that you need is in here. It always gets taken from here, it always gets put back here. That way you're never searching for something. It's just more efficient that way. We all know where everything is. So I'm gonna grab myself a straw fork and a rake, a shovel and a broom. And this should be all I need. Now, when I'm done, I'm gonna put everything back where it belongs. And it is very, very, very important when you hang up your tools to make sure they're clean. Because as John Madden says, it's bad luck when there's any straw or anything left in the tines and they're hung back up and nobody wants bad luck for BZ. So at JMS, primarily we bet on straw and we do this for a few reasons. Uh, one, it is a little bit more comfortable for the horse. There are studies that are out there that have been shown that horses actually sleep better on straw than they do on shavings or sawdust. It is a little bit more of a warmer bedding for them. Um, I would think that it would be a little bit more comfortable because you can put a lot more in it and it's more cost effective that way. If I put one bale of straw in here versus one bag of hay, that one bale of straw is gonna go a lot more than one bag of shavings. Plus, as far as uh, cost effectiveness in our area, this is local New York straw. So for us, the actual price of the bales, it's a little more cost effective than shavings. 
We're also not um, wasting so much plastic with the bags. You know, put eight bags of shavings in here to start a stall or 10, and you have a lot of waste. Uh, we use the twine for other things, um, so we're trying to be a little bit more environmentally friendly that way. Thinking of the environment as well, straw breaks down way faster than shavings. Shavings and composted piles probably take three to four years to break down in order to be able to compost it and spread it on a field unless you add something like lime to uh, offset the acidity of shavings. Um, this uh, straw we actually put directly into a spreader which is convenient for us and then we spread it on our fields it wouldn't turn out on a field that we just spread on we do do pasture rotation here um, but we do spread directly on our fields and then we mow them and uh, it's better for the grass that way going back to shavings again we do have a handful of horses on shavings it just depends if a horse has a specific allergy um, or if maybe they're a little bit on the rounder side um, we might keep them on shavings to control their weight a little bit because this type of bedding is, is a little stimulating. They can eat it if they run out of hay. We should try to keep hay in front of them um, most of the time. So if they do happen to run out, they do munch on it and it's fine and it keeps them a little bit more um, engaged uh, in their stall and busy. Um, the difference between cleaning a straw stall versus cleaning a shaving stall. In a shaving stall, you're sorting it and throwing the shavings up on the wall to try to get all the manure to come out and pick up the, uh, the wet. With the straw, I'm going to sort the straw to the clean stuff, put the clean stuff aside and try to get all of the um, dirty stuff in the middle and then I'm going to put the dirty stuff in the, in the spreader. So you're kind of sorting a shaving stall to find all the manure and a straw, you're kind of sorting the straw stall to save all the good stuff. All right, so here I'm just taking my straw fork and I'm starting to throw all of what I think is pretty good straw to the side. And I might uncover some <laughs> wet stuff, some manure. I'm going to put that to the side, a different side. I do want to know, yeah, I'm throwing it up to this corner here, but maybe tomorrow I'm going to take the straw and I'm going to use another corner. Move my pup. <laughs> 
So I kindly asked my dog to find another stall to bed down in while I clean under here and check and make sure that there's nothing under here. We got a few little pieces. Now if I find a nice clean corner here, I can start piling some of the clean stuff over here as well and turning over this whole area. than we call this like double mucking but for the sake of the video and the angle of the video uh, it wasn't going to work as well so normally as I was cleaning I'd be putting it into the spreader just going to get this pile you see that straw is a little fluffier than shavings so if you, if your barn has a dumpster that has to be removed, um, straw may not be the best option for you because dumpster costs money every time it gets removed and shavings take up less room than straw. So there are economical reasons why not just the cost of shavings versus the cost of straw, but other factors to consider when you're choosing a bedding for your horse. We're very fortunate in that we just go right to our fields. Um, and occasionally in the winter, we will make a pile and then spread it in the spring. Some people don't have that option. So you gotta do what's best for your program. Now I'm kind of getting to the point where Stuff is not going to fit on my straw fork anymore. So what I'm going to do, I got all my tools right here and convenient. I'm going to take this rake, I'm going to rake one more time everywhere that was bad. Running around searching for tools. Got everything right here. Alright, now that I've got all the bad stuff in the spreader, as much as I think that I've got it in the spreader, I'm going to double check and I'm going to turn over my piles of what I think is good and search and make sure 
I've got everything and then I didn't miss any big piles of manure. Always got to check those corners. They love to hide stuff in the corners. And I'm going to flip it up as I'm going. And start to even everything out. If you have a horse that really wet. Um, sometimes, occasionally, we might put a little bit of lime down to help with the odor or maybe a little bit of shavings on an area that might be a little wet. Uh, some horses go in the same spot all the time and, and it just gets really wet. So a little bit of shavings down before you pull your clean tanks down can help kind of contain that. wants to drink. I've heard people in the past say, well, I'm going to put the hay on the other side because uh, the horse makes such a mess of his water buckets. If your horse likes wet hay or to dunk their hay, it helps with digestion, so you should let them. And maybe you got to clean a bucket uh, every now and then a little bit more frequently or middle of the day, dump a bucket out. But if it helps their digestion, um, then you should probably do it. And so we keep the hay by the water in case the horse wants to do that. Okay, so I'm going to be cleaning up my area here from putting my bad pile in the threader. So I'm getting all the straw back into the stall. Attention to detail is important, so not just sweeping and thinking it's good, actually like looking and getting water buckets you want to take that out not let it get really smelly and then over here same by the salt block make sure the salt block isn't buried and accessible to the horse getting the corners this is also a time not just to blindly go through the motions but to look at everything are there any cobwebs the horse is in the stall so I can raise the broom up and be safe I might take my broom and just Hit the cobwebs if there are any in the corners. Up here, they like to collect. They'll do it overnight. It's amazing. In the corners, in the bars. We do dust the bars every day, um, but sometimes, you know, you might not be able to get something that's back here. Look up and see if there are any cobwebs by the light. Make sure the light's working. Back corner of the stall. and clean it. We do clean ours at least once a week. Um, everything here looks okay. So maybe get all this stuff out here because it just doesn't look as good. You know, they're going to kick the stuff up in there, but if you clean a little bit every day, then it's never that big of a deal to clean it. If you never clean it, then it's a really big deal the one time that you have to clean it. So if you just look around and clean a little bit every day, then it's never a big problem. Just to mention, we do clean our water buckets every day in the morning before we do stalls. They all get dumped, scrubbed, and refilled before we start this whole process. Um, and then again, if the horse is a dunker, we might need to empty one during the day or in the afternoon before rewatering. And we always check the water at night check as well, uh, make sure that they have enough to get through morning. All right, so I've checked the stall. There's no loose boards, no 
nothing that's dangerous like uh, in the stall. It's all cobweb. Everything's good. I'm ready to bed the stall down. I have this horse today. Well, I think only needs about a half a bale. So I'm going to take eat the flakes and shake them out. Now you can take a pitchfork and put them in the flake and shake it out that way. I just prefer to use my hands. So just kind of shake it around. It's nice and yellow and smells good and it's fluffy. Now if I get done with this half and I'm not satisfied with how the stall looks, I'm not just gonna leave it, I'm gonna add more. So it's just a guess that half will do. Looks beautiful. After we're done cleaning the stall, we make sure that the horse has enough hay to get through the morning before lunch hay. Uh, she does, she's got plenty because she came out of her stall um, right before we were gonna clean it and we're good there. So I'm gonna leave that and I'm done here. So that wraps up the Madden method for cleaning a stall for today. If you like what you see and you wanna see more, be sure to follow John Madden Sales on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And remember, if it's not comfortable for you, it's probably not comfortable for them.